uh, namaste and uh, good afternoon everybody thank you very much for firstly attending this uh, interesting and thought provoking discussion on this very important and topical issue tibet and india china conflict uh this is to be here uh, this is the pleasure transition also that is my walk from dharamshala to delhi this was 27 days of walk where i met hundreds and thousands of indians from himachal punjab haryana chandigarh and kashmir and throughout this journey i understood a different kind of india a different india that emerged For a very long time, this India has been looking at Pakistan as India. I have understood in this short one-month journey that India has replaced Pakistan as an enemy by China. This is new. For a very long time, there was a facade relationship between this country. that china is supposed to sponsor invest in india huge sums of money for india's infrastructure development and continuously governments made a plan <coughs> and chinese prime ministers and presidents kept on coming to india and even before they came they used to promise that they are likely to invest in india almost about a dollars of money in india's development but when that prime minister or the president left there was hardly do in india that is that do spread over 2 to 3 years and yet the drama that china is going to lift india's economic development remains and that facade was unmasked last year in the one year when indian divans were killed and their bodies were delivered to indian villages and their mothers thumped their chest and cried over the dead bodies of these sons of india india cried and said china for our mother for us mother goes kabhi The relationship between these two countries has changed. I am born in India. I'm as Indian as anybody can be born in India. But because I'm born into a Tibetan family, I always feel whenever whenever it comes to China, I feel double pride. एक तिब्बती होने के एक जिम्मेदारी है बड़ी मुझे करना है और एक भारतीय होने के लिए मुझे और ये दोनों में जुड़ा अगर आपको लग रहा है कि धर्मशाला से यहाँ तक पैदल आना कोई बड़ा काम है अच्छी नहीं है क्योंकि आई हैव टू ड्यूटीज टू फुलफिल इन प्रोटेक्टिंग इंडिया सिक्योरिटी एंड फाइट फॉर इंडिपेंडेंस ऑफ माई कंट्री बट लेकिन दुख इस बात के लिए कि जिस भारत को चीन से सुरक्षा देना था उस भारत को तिब्बत के बारे में जानकारी नहीं है दिस कंट्री इंडिया नीड्स प्रोटेक्शन एंड Malaysia has never been armed like the way it is today. But the population of India has grown to what it lies across the universe. 
क्या बात है जब मैं धर्म साहब से यहाँ से मिलने जा रहा था पंजाब के हरियाणा के लोग लोग हमारे चेहरे देखते ही चाइनीज बोलने शुरू कर दिए अब जिनको अपना दुश्मन पहचान नहीं है वो अपने दुश्मन के क्या लड़ेगा मैं तिब्बत के झंडा ले रहा हूँ भारत के झंडा दोनों कंधे पे तीस दिन ऐसे मार्च करके आ रहा हूँ और वो ही लोगों को मुझे देख के बोलते हैं कि तुम चाइनीज हो ये हमारा दुख भरी कहानी है इस देश की और ये इसलिए हुआ आई लाइक टू एक्सप्लेन वाई इट इज कम टू दिस इग्नोरेंस ऑफ पीपल अबाउट is mainly because india started its relationship with china from hindi chini bhaiya ki hum chin se dosti karenge aur unse rishta acha hoga aur usse hamara bhavishya hoga it started from there that india is going to be friends with the communist new rising power of china and we are going to be friends with this it started from there the idealism the communism is a great sense we are going to be the friends Rising two new powers in Asia after the Indian independence, and that was followed by military defeat in India in the next session, and that froze the relationship. And for a very long time, India stopped talking to China at all. And when the liberalisation Nineties, there was need for India for some kind of economic partnership with China, and conservative governments continue to say that China is going to be our friends, and this is how we have landed up in twenty twenty that there is not another national government in India. Now, if I'm speaking too strongly on this, I have. This ignorance about India's largest native country, with whom India shares the longest border, is India's parents. अपने शत्रु के बारे में जानकारी ना होना सबसे बड़ी खामी है. Tibet, which is a country of 2.5 million square kilometers, 25 lakh square kilometers. जो भारत के सबसे बड़ी नेबरिंग कंट्री है एंड विथ टिबेट इंडिया शेयर टू फोर थाउजेंड एंड एटी फाइव किलोमीटर बॉर्डर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम टॉप कारवाल एंड कुमाओ एंड टू नेपाल एंड सिक्किम भूटान अरुणाचल ऑल द वे डाउन Connecting to Bali, four thousand twenty-five kilometers. The biggest India's neighbouring country, but there is not a single mention of this in Indian textbooks. Bharat ki koi bhi textbooks mein Tibet ke baare mein kuch zikr nahi hai. Agar textbooks mein zikr nahi hai, to Bharat ke वहां को कैसे पता चलेगा क्या कि हिमालय के पार ऐसा एक देश था जिससे हमारा पारिवारिक रिश्ता आध्यात्मिक रिश्ता ऐसा रिश्ता था कि भाई भाई मानते थे और हिमालय के पारिवार ने जब तक चीन वहां से तिब्बत पर कब्जा किया तब तक वहां कोई सेना की जरूरत नहीं थी और And when the Britishers were here, they kept Tibet as a buffer zone, a safe buffer zone between British India and Chinese in the east and the Russians in the north. Tibet was kept as a safe buffer zone to secure India's Himalayan regions. Or if you go to any Himalayan country, like Ladakh, or हिमाचल उत्तराखंड सिक्किम और अरुणाचल कहीं भी उसी क्षेत्र में 
उनके लोग उनकी पारिवारिक जिंदगी तिब्बत से जुड़ी उनके भाषाएं धर्म संस्कृति नाच गाना रहन सहन किसी तरह से तिब्बत से जुड़ी ऐसा हमारे वो भाईचारा देखते अब एक डिस्टिंक्शन हो गए हैं देयर अ ह्यूज डिस्टिंक्शन बिटवीन द ट्रेडिशनल नॉलेज ऑफ इंडिया ट्रेडिशनल नॉलेज ऑफ टुडे इन इंडिया अमंग द साधुओं अगर आप साधुओं को बात में पूछेंगे तिब्बत के बारे में तो वो सीधे बताएंगे कि हिमालय के पास तिब्बत है यहां कैलाश पर्वत है मनसुर पर्वत है आप वहां जाके परिक्रमा कर सकते हैं दर्शन कर सकते हैं क्योंकि उनकी जानकारी वो टेक्स्ट बुक से नहीं आती उनके सांस्कृतिक शिक्षा व्यवस्था से आते हैं बट द यंग इंडियन हु आर एजुकेटेड टू द स्कूल्स एंड कॉलेजेस एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज बिकॉज़ दीस टेक्स्ट बुक्स नेवर टॉक अबाउट अबाउट टिबेट दे हैव वेरी लिटिल और एट लीस्ट और और इवन नो देयरफॉर एज एन इंडियन एंड आल्सो एज अ टिबेटन आई फील वेरी स्ट्रांगली दैट देयर इज अ ह्यूज नीड immediately supplant this education process and include a chapter an important chapter include that whether india supports the ongoing tibetan freedom movement or not it's india's political decision but it must be placed in indian young education that this was tibet and this is how it was otherwise circumstances push for such an education and i am now talking about last year's balwan valley massacre which was followed by indian army doing a crash course in tibetan religion and culture and beliefs indian army ko tibet ke baare mein ek crash course lena hi hai kyunki indian army ko aise pehle sikhaye nahi gaye isse भारत को ताकत मिलेगी इस ज्ञान से भारत को ताकत मिलेगा और हम अपनी सीमाओं और पूरी देश को सतर्क रख सकते हैं नाउ आई वांट टू प्लेस फाइव रीजंस व्हाई इंडिया मस्ट रिपीट वन थिंग दिस एंड दिस इज द मेन टारगेट आई विल व्हिच आई डिड दिस मार्टन फ्रॉम ब्रिटिश सोलेट टू स्टडी and although my march my patyatra is going to end here in delhi the campaign repeating one china policy will continue and it must robustly move forward especially with indian participation one china policy which earlier used to be talked only about taiwan and Taiwan used to say that entire region of China is under Taiwan, which was which is in today it's called Republic of China. While People's Republic of China, which is called the what is called the mainland, used to say Taiwan was also part of it. So there was conflict between Taiwan, which is called the Republic of China, and China, which is People's Republic. There was a conflict between these two, which was kind of decided in 1971 when. Taiwan Taiwan was replaced by China in the United Nations and today most of the countries agree with people's republic of china and taiwan is not considered an independent country though taiwan has emerged as a promising independent country with everything well organized within the country but china has very cleverly redefined the idea of one country China has now started to say that all the countries which are under China, under the People's Republic of China, today, which emerged in 1949, says that the entire region is not only under China, but they have always been part of China. So this is a clever redefinition where China is now abrogating history, colonizing history, and that's why. constant conflict between india and china because india doesn't look at that india does not because india's latest statement about china and tibet 
this as stated by former Prime Minister Kiri Pati Bilalabasipan. And that statement even today continues to say, that statement says, Tibet Autonomous Region is part of the people's province. Now, this is a very important statement. It's a slight uh, deflection from traditional uh, statement which Nehru and uh, Rajiv Gandhi used to say that Tibet is about Tibet Autonomous Region is about the people's revolution. And if I paraphrase it, it says Tibet Autonomous Region, which was created in 1965 as an administrative body by the people's government of China, is a part of people's revolution, which was set up in 1949, which means India deserved to talk about the situation of China before 1949. India reserved to talk about Tibet before 1965. And Tibet autonomous region is one third of Tibet. The rest of Tibet, which China has fed up and attached to traditional provinces like Qinghai, Sichuan, Gansu, and Yunnan, India reserved to talk about them. These are missiles India has created to challenge China. And I want to remind the government of India that these missiles that they created, Arun Diari, Vajpayee, Created are now in the West. India must question the situation of Tibet before 1965. And therefore, if India believes one thing first, India can question China about China, about China's occupied countries of Tibet, Uzbekistan, Southern Mongolia, Manchuria, and, in, and China's constant devastating effect on Hong Kong and constant threat to invade Taiwan by military force. Creating one China policy will place India in a position of power. So that India does not have to play subordinate to China. How can China continue to you know, do this uh, 1962 and Valley and then say let us disengage? And it is always placed subservient to us. This is how we can have power. And Rubina wants to know this. India can dislodge China politically, diplomatically, so strongly that China will go about missing, looking for answers. Are they going to answer about Tibet? Are they going to answer about Uzbekistan, Southern Mongolia, Manchuria, Hong Kong, Taiwan? All of all, and also about the 9.6 million square kilometer of uh, space, which is also in the South China Sea. And out of all the China's territory that China is claiming today, 60% of that landmass is occupied. What are Jawab Gunte Gunte Bhat Rangit? As they are my question. My first reason why we must continue with one China policy is morally. Morally, it is wrong to accept an occupied country as a part of the occupying force, especially when you very clearly know that this terrorist is about to come. Especially when the country is suffering and when there is a genocide going on. How do you then stand with the occupying force who has so much of wealth and money and say, you know what? It's morally wrong for any country. I know I'm born in India, I'm standing here, I'm standing in India, New Delhi, and saying it. It's morally wrong for any country to stand with an occupying force who is, who is killing the occupied people in the country. First reason. Second reason. When China does not respect one India policy, then why should we respect one China policy? What about 
हम चाहे भी भूली जो हम कैसे जब से जीव की जरूरत के ऊपर वो खतरा हुआ भारत को माने सुरक्षा के बारे में चिंतित अब इतना चिंतित हो गया कि आर्मी में भारतीय सेना में पूरी एक और खड़ा हो गया कन्नम So therefore, in the long term interest of India, it is never good for India to maintain minorities. In fact, it's dangerous. Therefore, India must maintain minorities. My fourth reason: one-China policy has proved to be most costly for India. जिस पैसे से हम अपनी बच्चों को शिक्षा दे सकते हैं, अपने स्वास्थ्य की व्यवस्था को ठीक करा सकते हैं और भी अच्छा बना सकते हैं उस पैसे से आज भी माने सुरक्षा में पैसा लगता है और सिर्फ पैसे नहीं वहां से डर रहता है कुछ होना चाहिए एंड इसलिए क्योंकि हम पूरे तिब्बत And lopsided policy must be stopped immediately. Repeal was to hurt the country. And my last question, my last reason. Galvan Valley, the camp, the camp. So, I'm going to tell you that the other region is this is the last one. Eight Jawah Mila. And who Jawah Mila is in this one? On Raj. वो राजनीति जवाब दैट पॉलिटिकल आंसर दैट डिप्लोमेटिक आंसर इंडिया मस्ट चेंज एज वी ऑल नो आफ्टर द गोल्डन रैपिड्स बट समहाउ वी हैव टू रिस्पोंड एंड दैट फिटिंग रिस्पोंड चैलेंज इज रिपीट वन चाइना पॉलिसी रिपीटिंग वन चाइना पॉलिसी इज इंडियाज मस्ट द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट Now this is so much of political talk. It is not going to happen immediately, but we can start from saying that Tibet was not China was not China was. जब तक हम चाइना बोलते बोलते जाएंगे हम ये मान रहे हैं चाइना अब नहीं मानेगा अब नहीं मानेगा So we must start by saying Tibet. We must start by recognizing Tibetan dominance. We must start by giving political respect to his holiness as well. His his holiness, the Dalai Lama, is not just his first leader; he's the leader of all time. And at the moment, his holiness, the Karmapa, is also in the foreign country. This is the time for India to gather all. Our imam and powers together, and bring them together and create this one kind of policy. But India cannot do it alone. All other countries in Europe and America and Canada and Australia, they are also facing difficulties as well. All of them, without any exception, all these countries are. Trade deficits on China. All of them. They complain, but because the trade lobbying are powerful in the presidents and prime ministers' offices, they are not able to speak up. But now is the time. And some of the countries have already started to talk about starting campaigns to repeat one-China policies in those countries. And as it rises, campaigning for repeating one-China policy in all these countries will truly. Lead a global campaign for repealing one China policy, where India can play an important role. India today.
today with the leadership of Sri Narendra Modi ji has already started to respond to it. And this has for the first time in anywhere has become one country who is responding to it. And therefore India has given the leadership already. All, none of the countries have responded to China in the way this country has. We have said no to one belt, one road policy. India is the only country who said, has said that. We have protected our best. So there is an integrity in India's leadership in responding to China. So I will now uh, conclude here. I'm sorry, I on over time, uh, if I may, and I see we get up throughout extra time here. Um, but it's very important to, to say this from here. But change responses is not just from India and the international community, from the Tibetan community also. We just cannot continue to think that somebody else is going to change in our country. Tibetan freedom struggle must be fought by Tibetan. And at the moment, the Tibetan government exam continues to speak for autonomy, hoping that China is going to give us some autonomy in some part of the planet. There is nothing like that going to happen. We must continue to speak for independence. And at the moment, the Tibetan government exam's policy that speaks for autonomy, the language it says that it accepts people's involvement in China as it is. It's completely wrong. You may want to speak about your own desires and your own policies, but the moment the Tibetan government in exile speaks for accepting people's republic of China's structures and traditions as it is, we we are inadvertently also saying that we accept that East Pakistan, Southern Mongolia, and Manchuria and all these parts are. Part of China. It's wrong from our side. We must change this. So, therefore, um, I've, I've tried to present some of my opinions here. Some of them may not be so agreeable, but I would like to present them this way. I've been an activist and a writer for, for some time, but I will continue 